You might have a lot of questions about my 600-pound life. Like, does Dr. Now really care about his patients? What's the deal with all the enablers? And can't the people on the show just make better choices? The answers to these questions might surprise you, so let's weigh in on the false things you can stop believing about my 600-pound life. To live through what she has and to be the person she is, that's beyond strength. Dr. Now, as his patients call him, has become quite the reality TV star thanks to the popularity of his show. But some viewers might think that he basically just plays a doctor on TV and isn't really that great at what he does. Dr. Now and I have a game plan, and if I decide I want to have more surgeries, I will. But Dr. Now is actually a pioneer in his field, with a long and successful career in medicine. For one, most doctors and hospitals won't accept patients over 450 pounds for weight loss surgery because they don't have the right equipment. But Dr. Now accepts many patients who far exceed that weight. Additionally, he was the first doctor in all of Houston to use laparoscopic techniques for groundbreaking procedures and has published his work in prestigious medical journals. So don't go thinking he just portrays a doctor on TV, this MD is the real deal. Degree or no degree, Dr. Now is quite the character. He's incredibly straightforward, usually to the point of bluntness, and doesn't feed his patients pretty stories promising that they won't have to work hard. Sometimes he can even seem overly clinical. His occasionally odd manner with patients might make one wonder if he's just in it for the money or the fame. This time next year, your life will be completely changed. But the truth is, Dr. Now isn't necessarily banking the big bucks for the surgeries he performs. On the contrary, he says he's motivated by a sincere desire to help people enjoy healthy and productive lives, not take them for everything they're worth. He told Houstonia magazine, "...looking at the moral obligation that we've got, you see somebody who has no life who could have a life. We don't need to be rich. We do make a living, but we don't need to worry about making a living out of every patient we see." This is a very concerning pattern that you need to get handle on. Otherwise, this is going to lead you back to gain everything you lost. Even though the patients on the show receive resources and surgery to help them get to a healthier place in life, there's a lot that goes into filming the show. Suck it up, buttercup. It's time to go. Gotta get this done. For one, there's always a camera around, so participants are always being watched. And often it's difficult for patients to make the trek even to see the doctor. Oftentimes they have to uproot their entire lives and relocate to Houston. And it's been a long time since I've been in a car. And now I'm going to be in one for at least 20 hours." So you might wonder if participants are also getting a massive kickback to be featured on the show. In reality, the patients reportedly receive up to $1,500 as a talent fee, plus a $2,500 relocation stipend if needed. That's not a lot, especially when it comes to medical expenses. Some patients who have been on the show have been open about financial struggles continuing long after their stories have been broadcast around the world. Some have spoken of trouble affording cars and transportation, while others have talked about not having enough money to finance important medical procedures, such as skin removal surgery. Basically, just because someone was on TV doesn't mean they're rolling in the dough. There's not a day that goes by that I don't have pain. There are a few things that all of the patients have in common on My 600-Pound Life, and enduring serious pain is definitely one of them. Whether it's difficulty walking, driving, or trying to accomplish even the most basic tasks, patients on the show have talked at length about how much they're hurting, both physically and mentally. Being this overweight, everything I do is hard and it's a struggle. While you might be tempted to think that some patients are making things sound worse than they are, they're likely not exaggerating. According to a study in the Journal of Pain Research, obese individuals commonly report that they do experience all kinds of chronic pain. So if someone on the show says they're hurting, their pain is worth believing in. One way or another, it's probably true. As Dr. Now often says, most of the people on the show have enablers. They're usually family members who are complicit in a patient's compulsive overeating. Ready for breakfast? Thought you'd never ask. <laughs> All right. Often, enablers don't just tolerate the overeating, they'll also bring patients the very food that's essentially killing them. So you could ask, once Dr. Now puts his patients on a diet, why don't these enablers just stop bringing the extra food? If I don't do what she wants, it's a war zone. I asked for one Thing. The psychology of addiction and enabling is actually quite complicated. From fear of hurting their feelings or retaliation from the addict to a desire to be liked or loved, enabling behavior can be quite a challenge to overcome. Doesn't look like he lost any weight. You're killing him. According to Psychology Today, fat phobia runs rampant in society, and it complicates the lives of the obese in a variety of ways. That includes the widespread belief that obese people are lazy and lack willpower and are solely responsible for their body size. And many people believe that the patients on My 600 Pound Life could just stop eating if they really wanted to. I'm really feeling the need for a little indulgence. But longtime viewers know how hard it can be for patients to make the changes they need for their very survival. I know their situation has a lot to do with what I allowed to happen when they were kids. 
but it's still hard to sit there as their mom and not do something about it. This is exactly why Dr. Now will often send patients to receive psychological counseling to help them deal with the issues that compel them to eat. Once they face their demons, they often find that they can better control their dietary intake. Most people know that losing weight can be extremely difficult. That's one reason why weight loss surgery is so popular. It helped many people lose weight and transform their lives. And according to the American Society for Metabolic and Bariatric Surgery, even more of these procedures are being performed every year. I know surgery is risky, but not having it is riskier. But the reality is, weight loss surgery is no quick fix. A fact Dr. Now is quick to point out. He told Houstonia, People come looking for a single solution to their problem, and sometimes the answer is not what they want to hear. They think surgery is the solution for everything, and it's not going to change people's behavior toward food. This will help him to continue to lose weight, but this is really just the beginning for them. Just like he often says on the show, surgery is a tool to help patients gain control over their food addiction, but they have to put in the hard work of adopting healthy eating and exercise habits for the rest of their lives. That's not an easy task. It's not easy being obese. Beyond the physical struggles, people of a certain size face widespread bias, including the misconception that larger people are doomed to be unlucky in love. As a result, some people might think that the clients on the show are doomed to a life of solitude. He has no idea how close to death I feel every day. But regular viewers know that nothing could be further from the truth. In fact, many patients already have romantic partners when they enroll in Dr. Now's program. What do you see in our future? What do you see in our future? Nothing. Romantic partnerships can sometimes fall apart during the show if one of the partners is uncomfortable with their loved one making changes, but even then, those patients regularly go on to find new love. Another thing that many patients on My 600 Pound Life have in common is the tragic life experience of childhood trauma. My stepdad started to abuse me and my siblings. Some participants grew up in a chaotic household with parents addicted to drugs or alcohol, some were abused by an adult figure in their lives, some were subjected to violence, and others survived assault. But is it really possible that childhood trauma can cause someone to eat their way to 600 pounds? The answer is a resounding yes. According to Dr. Judith J. Wertman, writing for Psychology Today, no one gains massive amounts of weight just because they love to eat. There is almost always a sad story. Sometimes we think we're hungry for food when we're really hungry for purpose. Those sad stories are often about how a painful childhood trauma altered an individual's psychology to the point where their compulsive overeating couldn't be controlled. And the show reveals in extreme cases just how devastating the impact of these painful events experienced in early life can really be. Food was my comfort through good and bad situations, but it didn't help with some of the shit that was going on. Quite often, when patients first arrive at Dr. Now's office and step on the scale, they're surprised to see how much they actually weigh. While it must be extremely difficult to be confronted by the reality of how much weight they've gained, the reactions can make one wonder. Wouldn't the average person already know that they've tipped the scales over 600 pounds, given how many calories they take in every day? I can't face the reality of how many calories I eat, so I just don't keep track at all." The answer is not exactly. The truth is, many patients don't truly realize how out of control things have gotten until they're confronted with some hard numbers. For one, most bathroom scales only measure up to 300 pounds, so there's often no way for them to get an accurate read on their weight. Even scales you find at most doctor's offices aren't built to weigh someone who weighs 600 pounds or more. That's why Dr. Now has a custom scale in his office that can weigh up to 900 pounds. If you've been avoiding the numbers long enough, catching a first glimpse at your real weight can be a definite shock. 725. My 600 Pound Life has gotten so popular that TLC created a spin-off series, Where Are They Now?, which follows up on previous participants and the progress they've made. The last two years have been the most life-changing years of my life. It's usually a heartwarming story as many patients continue to make solid progress and are much happier than they were before surgery. I feel, I feel womanly and sassy. It takes a lot for me to feel sassy. But if you're hoping to see every single star's follow-up episode, that's not going to happen. For some, the realities of filming a reality show aren't exactly positive. For example, season 3's Amber has expressed several issues she had with the production company. She told Starcasm, "...they ran late, reshot difficult-to-replicate scenes, and really sort of acted like bullies. When I would say I had a boundary I didn't want crossed, their first reaction was always to threaten to postpone or cancel my surgery." But even considering her unfortunate experience, Amber also stresses that she doesn't regret her surgery, and that Dr. Now is, quote, truly wonderful. 
Some people like to say that a person's weight is simply the result of the calories they take in versus the calories they burn on a daily basis. Additionally, some folks think it's easy to make healthy choices and simply eat when they're hungry and stop when they're full. If all that were true for everyone, it should be easy for an obese person to lose weight, right? Well, it's actually much more complicated than that. I don't feel entitled, but I want what I want, and when I don't get it, I get pissed off. Dr. Now wrote in Obesity Help, We need to spread the message that obesity is not a patient's choice, that it is a metabolic and genetic disposition that people have, and this is a disease and needs to be treated as a disease. The evidence is clear. When it comes to gaining and losing weight, there's a lot more at play than a person's willpower. Another popular weight loss-themed reality show is The Biggest Loser, in which obese contestants compete against one another to see who loses the most weight. The winner is awarded a cash prize and, of course, the title of Biggest Loser. I feel like a new man. I'm in the best shape of my life. But the production of the series came under scrutiny when it was revealed that the techniques used on the show didn't typically lead to long-term weight loss. Day one, funnest day in the world. Jump on, 15 seconds, go. According to the Harvard Health Letter, the hormonal changes that some participants endured during the competition eventually caused them to jump just regain the weight. Additionally, evidence suggests that the best weight loss solution for those who are severely obese is surgery, not competing to see who can do the most jumping jacks. So it's clear that the techniques used on The Biggest Loser are drastically different than those of My 600 Pound Life. Sure, Dr. Now requires all of his patients to eat a healthy diet, get exercise and stick to the program, but he's sure not shipping them off to boot camp. This doctor's not in it to entertain people. He's there to get results. Check out one of our newest videos right here! Plus, even more list videos about your favorite stars are coming soon. Subscribe to our YouTube channel and hit the bell so you don't miss a single one.